love you all. Welcome, all you lovers, to the Florida Love Show. This is your love hour right before happy hour, sponsored by Florida Love. Join us each week as we spread love in the Florida community and transform the world with love. Now, back to spreading love. This is for you, Kenny. It's the Florida Love Show. Paying love forward is the theme. It's the Florida Love Show, hosted by Kenny and his dream. Every special guest brings their love to the set. And the interview flies, it all comes alive, like a duet. He has a very special side In the Brooklyn Cafe It's a big love affair With roses galore And you are adored Come take a bouquet Show your love Wherever you Florida Love Show singer, and oh my God, Shat, you just touch my heart every time you sing that. A hug and a kiss. It's the Florida Love Show. So we're going to be spreading love all over the world today. Welcome all you lovers to the Florida Love Show. I'm Kenny Love, the founder and creator, host and lover of Florida Love and the Florida Love Show. So we're a nonprofit, 501c3, but everything on Florida Love is free. Okay? Don't ask for donations, nothing. It's free. Free, 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 free. Love has to be free. And today I have a very special show and guest today. I have Marla Tettleman Emanuel, who I call Marla Love, and we're going to be loving her dad, Ben. And her dad, Ben, is the same name as my dad, Ben. So when Marla and I first spoke, I said, you got to come on the Florida Love Show. We got to do an in loving memory to your dad, Ben. And they were both veterans, right? And mm -hmm. 
My middle name is Mark. Your husband's middle my name? Old, my oldest brother's Mark. Oldest brother's name is Mark, right? So again, when crazy coincidences happen, God is love, and he's spreading love all over the world. That's what happens with crazy coincidences. So I'm going to play my first song as a dedication to Marla and her dad, Ben. And when I play it, Marla, after, you could tell me why I played it. Please play the first song. There's a hero If you look inside your heart You don't have to be afraid Of what you are There's an answer If you reach into your soul And the sorrow that you know Will melt away And then a hero comes along With strength to carry on And you cast your fears aside And you know you can survive So when you feel like hope is gone Look inside you and be strong And you'll finally see the truth love I love you so much why did I play that song and tell me about this photo 
That's my parents, Ben and Rita Tettleman. Uh, my mom was Rita Siegel before she married my dad, Ben. And sorry, that's my dad and my mom, Ben and Rita Tettleman. My mom was Rita Siegel prior to marrying my dad. And that song is special to me because my dad is and was my hero and will always be my hero and my first love. So we just got a comment from Mary Kay Arena saying, love you, Cousin Maria. Marla. Uncle Ben <laughs> was special. Oh, my God. Taylor Ryan Career saying, I love you, Kenny. I love you, Taylor. Love you, love you, love you. Do you know Taylor? Taylor, you know Taylor Isaacs. Love? Sheila Rose. My dad's name is Ben, too. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Let's see what I'm telling you. This is what happens. <laughs> God is spreading love all over the world. Oh, love you, true love. Love you, love you, love you. True love does all these amazing posters for the shows. Oh, I love you, Robert. Beautiful voice. Love you, Robert. Love. Love you, love it. He's got the biggest heart. Love you, Robert. Oh, my God. Colleen Marie. Love you, Colleen. Love you, love you, love you. Do you know Colleen? No. But oh, my God. No. Mary Kay Arena. That's my first cousin. Your first cousin. My Mary Kay. Side. First cousin. Love you, love you, yes, love you. I love, love you. I love you, Mary Kay. Love you, love you, love you, Mary Kay, love. Oh, my God. So I want to show you. So that one picture. Let me show you another picture. What's this? That's my parents and I on September 24th, 1989, when I married my first husband, Adam. And I have a beautiful daughter named Jamie, Jamie Brooke Lyon, from that marriage, who is my best friend. And I love her so much. Beautiful. And I also love Jacob, her amazing husband. Yeah, so, so handsome, so beautiful, gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. So why did I play that song, Hero? Because my dad is and was my hero and will always be. He is just an inspiration to me, not just because he was my dad, but they don't make him like him anymore. He was a very, very special man, heart of gold, taught me to always take the high road and just practice kindness to everyone, every creature, cat, dog, just that that's who the man he was always wanting to help loving to help people um always volunteering he was always the the basketball coach the baseball coach for my three brothers the den dad for boy scouts that's who my dad was yeah didn't you also tell me if some people needed a few bucks and you he would just hand them because that's who he was absolutely yeah so generous and loving your dad. Yeah, like a, stra a stranger. If somebody was Pure on the love. side of the road, you know, he loved to fix cars. So if anybody had a car issue, my dad was right there to help. Yeah, he'd pull over and help. Exactly. Pure love. I love your dad, Ben, so much. Love you, love you, love you. And they're like a Hollywood couple. This is like out of a movie. <laughs> they would have been married 75 years, June 18th of this year. Wow. Mazel tov. Wow. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. So I just want to just show everybody. So this is my dad, Ben, just so everybody knows. Let me just get this right. <laughs> so that's me and my dad's Ben. And your dad reminds me of my dad, Ben. So we got a lot of dad Bens out there. Love you, love you, love you. Love you, dad. Love you, love you. So I just want to show a few more photos since you mentioned a few different people here. So who's this? That's my best friend, Jamie Brooke Lyon. My daughter, she's 31 years old. She's a school teacher and she's a warrior because those school teachers have a lot to deal with these days. But she really loves teaching because she is a lot like her grandpa Ben. She is a kind human being. She practices tolerance and just loves life, has a zest for life, which my dad had. Mm. So I got to share with her and speak with her. She is such love. I mean, such pure love, like her mom, like your dad. I mean, pure love. I love you, love you, love you so much, Jamie. So special. So, Can I add something? Of course. Tell her how much so you love her. Jamie, Go ahead. Jamie is a second grade teacher, but, however, she ha is so creative, which a lot of teachers are, but she's above and beyond creative. Like she probably could have been an art teacher. She has a little craft business on the side. She's an amazing cook. 
and she has the most unbelievable handwriting. My family and friends can attest to it because every time she would have to write a thank you note for a birthday gift or a bat mitzvah gift, people would call me and say, I've never seen such magnificent handwriting in my life. And I would say, well, that comes from Grandpa Ben. Oh my God, Jamie saying love you. Yay. Love you, Jamie. Love you, love you, love you, Jamie, love. I love you, Jamie, more than ever. Every second of the She's day. She's so beautiful, inside and out. Yep, she sure is. I'm blessed. She wrote, hi, Mom. <laughs> you, you love her so much, more than anything in the whole world. She's I, your best friend. Yes. She is. She's my, she's my daughter sister, if there is such a thing. <laughs> first, mm. I'm her mom first, but she's definitely my sister. Mm. So beautiful, so beautiful, so beautiful. Oh, my God. So since you mentioned some other people, I want to just see. Who's this Heisman Trophy winner? <laughs> when I That's... saw this photo, I said to her, is this guy like a football player in college, a Heisman Trophy winner? <laughs> She's like, no, that's my son. <laughs> that's my 14-year-old. Yeah. My, my big, big, big boy who's 14 and a half. I love him so much. It's such a pride and joy. Went through a lot. My closest family and friends, but no negativity today. It's all good. But I went through a lot to bring him on this earth, but it was worth every pain, pick, and proke that the doctors did. And he's amazing. He's brought so much joy to our family, our little family, my husband, Ronnie. Um, it's his first child and our only child together. And we just love him so much. He's so much like his grandpa, Ben. It is truly amazing in such a wonderful way. The personality traits of Brandon are so similar to my father that Every day I say to myself, my dad's with me every day because he's living in Brandon. He truly is living in that six foot, 172 mm -hmm. pound, 14 year old boy. Mm -hmm. I really don't know a child of this age. I, and, I, and I am the Kool-Aid mom. Like there are kids in and out of my house all the time. Mm -hmm. And I love each and every one of the kids that he comes, that come to my house, but how many 13-year-olds say to their parents, nah, I don't need a cell phone. Save your money. He was the only kid at his bar mitzvah that didn't have a cell phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone else is taking photos. He's the star of the show, and he doesn't have a cell phone. I just, I think that speaks in itself, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. So you're so proud of him. You love him so much. Mm -hmm. I really do. He really... So tell him. I tell him, I love you, Brandon, even though you don't like social media, I love you. <laughs> he, um, he really is a mentor to a lot of his friends and peers, and I love that about him so much. He's, uh, even though he's a big kid, obviously, but he's, it doesn't matter. It, it's what his character. Um, he actually won, they give these little awards in, um, elementary school and middle school. I think he won the Tolerance Award like four times. Mm. And actually, coincidentally, Jamie also won the Tolerance Award in mm. elementary school. So very, very, uh, mm. they're very similar. Two different dads, but their personalities are so similar. Mm. And they're so similar because they're like their grandpa, Ben. Oh, Jamie wrote, love you. Love you, love you, love you, Jamie. Oh, I love her so much. <laughs> and I love Brandon so much. So I want to play a song now, actually, okay. um, that I think encompasses what we're sharing about. Oh, I love you, Sheila Rose. Love you, love you, love you. Roses to you, Sheila Rose. Dozen roses to you. Love you, love you. So, Josh, I want to skip the news, and I want to go to the first song. Please play the first song.
Mm, beautiful. Love was made for me and you. Love you, love you, love you, Marla. Love you. So, here we go. Love was made for me and you. So why did I play that song? Because you love everyone and you love me and you just love talking about love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And do you know who originally they thought sang that song? Was it Nat King Cole? Yeah, but Sinatra. Oh, okay. My yeah. dad's favorite. Yeah, so that was your dad's favorite, Sinatra, yep. right? Yep, yep. One of them, Glenn Miller. Okay. He had a couple, but definitely love Frank Sinatra. Love Sinatra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So Marla came in today with what I call a love karma gift because I don't expect anything in return for, you know, just giving because that's love, just to just give because with no expectations of anything in return. And Marla just came in with, oh, I love you, Sheila Rose. Love you, love you. Oh, my God, James. Love you, brother. Love you, love you, James. I love you. He's got such a big heart. Love you, James. Love, love you. Oh, my God. Oh, love you, Sheila. Love you, love you, love you. Oh, this is the best. Oh, my God, this is the best. So she walked in with a, um, a love karma gift for me. So I'm just going to read this about karma. This is love karma. What goes around comes around. Keep your circle positive, speak good words, think good thoughts, do good deeds. So I always love surprises, so I didn't open this yet, so I have no <laughs> idea what Marla Love got me. Oh my, God. oh my God, this is so, and kisses, oh my God, I love kisses. Oh my God. You gotta put this the is, hat on. You I gotta to put, put the, the hat, hat on. on. Gotta put the hat on, okay. Do you love it? I love it. Gotta take the tag off. Take the tag <laughs> off. You're such a mamala. <laughs> oh, take the tag off, absolutely. Take the tag off. Absolutely, I love it. Love you, Marla. Oh, my God. Oh, this I is gotta, so, gotta, did I do it right, or should it go to like this? Yeah, yeah, you're good. That's good? Okay, there we go. Now, <laughs> what about the bracelet? It's actually... Oh, Taylor, I love you so much. She's my biggest fan. Love you, love you, love you, Taylor. I don't know if it's a, is it a bracelet? I just saw it. It's red, festive, and I thought you would like it. Oh, my God, this is so All cool. Right. You made it a bracelet. Good. <laughs> I love it. Uh oh, I'm going to make noise on this sh show. It'll be too noisy, but I love it. I the love kisses. it. Look at this. This is great. So, matter of fact, while we're in the holiday spirit, I just want to wish everyone a Merry Hanukkah and a Happy Christmas, <laughs> right? Yep. Merry Hanukkah and a Happy I love Christmas that. to everyone. All you lovers out there. So, go love everyone. It's, it's Merry Hanukkah and Happy Christmas. And Give, 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 give. Spread the love all over the world. Oh, I love this. This is so great. So my other thing is, is that I don't want much for Christmas. I just want the person who is reading this to be happy, healthy, and loved. And loved. I love this. I love you. I love you all. Love you, love you, love you. Love you, Marla, love. This is the best gift you're like, oh, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing. This is the best mm, gift. That's good. I'm glad you like it. I love it. And my, <laughs> look at this. This is great. Don't forget the kisses. Well, the kisses. This is ultimate. Yeah, you can't share those with anyone. They're only for you, Kenny. My kisses. <laughs> love you, love you, love you, Ma. So I'm going to show you a few more, a whole lot, lot more love. Okay. okay, well, I got you here. Okay, let's start off with... Ah, uh, looks great, Ken. Love you, true love. Love you, brother. I love you. All right, so let's start off with this one. Tell me about this one. <laughs> well, you said it was the Beatles and Marla. I thought it was the Beatles, but then if it was the Beatles, you were Ringo. <laughs> it's Peter, Peter, John, Paul, and Ringo. So you're Ringo. I'm Ringo. So those are my big bros, Mark, Bruce, and Larry, who I had the pleasure of growing up with being the youngest child and the only girl was definitely interesting, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Mm. Sometime, oh. <laughs> sometimes I felt like I had four fathers. Oh, she just wrote that hat is gorgeous. See, it's, oh. you think this is nothing? This okay. is special. <laughs> That's this right. means the world to I'll me. I'll autograph it before I leave. Please, okay. this means the world to me. I'm glad. I mean, when somebody just gives a gift just because they're just thinking of you, yeah. they love you, it's the best. So that, like, just go out and give today. Just go out and That's give everybody today. Just I, love everybody I today. I enjoy making people happy. We have a lot in common, you and I. 
Yes, that's and what love is. Love is selfless. It's another person's happiness. That's right. That's right. So that's Mark on the right, and in the middle is Bruce. Oh, look what Josh wrote about you. Josh Love, you wrote, just met Marla, tons of love in her heart. Oh, that's Josh, Josh Love on production. Oh. oh, oh, that was sweet, Josh. I love meeting you, too. Um, so my other brother on the left is my brother, Larry. Mm -hmm. And so Larry and I are five years apart. Bruce in the middle, we're 11 years apart. And Mark on the right, we're 14 and a half years apart, almost 15. So, again, it was like having three other dads. And because I lost my dad at mm. 25 years old, mm. definitely, even though I was an adult and married, I was still obviously very young. And having three older brothers definitely, definitely filled, did, it could, of course, couldn't actually fill my father's, you know, gap but it certainly helped a lot and has always helped all these years. Even though they don't live in Florida, I just, the fact that I know they exist and they're a phone call away or a trip to New York or a trip to New Hampshire where I just got back from my brother Mark, the oldest, his daughter just got married October 7th. And uh, not all of us, but all three of my brothers were there with my sister-in-laws and a couple of my nieces and nephews, not everybody, but enough, enough to say it was a wonderful family gathering. And um, you actually have a picture, I think, in the montage of that. But um, that picture is love. It's the Beatles and Ringo, but it's love. <laughs> yeah, so Mazel Tov on the wedding, and also that's my mom's birthday, right. October 7th. Another See coincidence. All these yeah. And your brother Mark, uh, my middle name is Mark. So yeah, here's the Beatles. Uh, you're so adorable, Ringo. <laughs> I love you, Marla. I so love you much, too. so much, so much. So, every time I do it in loving memory, everybody who passed passed unexpectedly. And sometimes people never got to say I love you or say goodbye. Oh, that hat is so cute. Love you, Sheila. Love, love you, love you, love you. Sheila, I'll, I'll you tell again. Sheila I'll buy her one too. <laughs> Sheila, she's going to buy you one too. <laughs> Paul's going to buy you one, too. So how did your dad pass, like, unexpectedly? Well, he actually had a rare disease called scleroderma, an autoimmune disease, which back in 1990, they really didn't know much about it. Okay, but before 1990, did he know he had that disease? No. 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 Right? No. See, I always say on the show, life is short. I could pass right now, so what are we waiting for? Let's all love each other now. We only have now. I so agree. Yeah, so love you, love you, love you so much, and love your dad Ben so much. You had no idea. He had no idea. My parents had pretty much just retired in January and moved to Florida, January 1990. And within four to six weeks, he was in Delray Medical Center, very sick. And on June 29th, which was my mom's birthday, he couldn't breathe. And I'll never forget that night as long as I live. My brother Bruce took him to the emergency room in Long Island, because uh, what happened was th they moved to Florida, but he had gone into the hospital with, like I said, within four to six weeks, and me being me, and just being so close to my father, I came down here, uh, and uh, you know, after speaking to my brothers, we just made an executive decision to bring him back to New York. They still had their house in Massapequa. And then that's when a couple of months later, he couldn't breathe. And uh, my brother Bruce took him to the hospital. And sadly, he never came home. Mm. He went into the hospital on January 29th. He had a tracheotomy mm. on him, mm. which never came off. And he passed September 15th. I was there when he passed mm. in the hospital. So you were there in the hospital the moment he passed? Yeah. So you actually got to hold his hand mm -hmm. so that's very rare and what was that like for you I have to be honest it's a little bit of a blur but I was definitely there when the you know they do that code and I I, I should remember but sometimes when things are so sad <laughs> my memory has a little storage area of the bad things that I put aside, but I, I may not have been in the room, but of course, as soon as it happened, I was in the room. And yes, I did hold his hand after he passed. 
and I'll never forget that as long as I live. And like I shared with you, I have notes that he wrote. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't find them. They're somewhere in, in a little storage area that I keep of memories. But um, he could not speak. His brain and everything was all normal, but because of the tracheotomy that he had for breathing, I think it actually came off one time and we were so hopeful, but he wasn't able to breathe on his own. It had to go back on a day later or a few hours later. Uh, but he used to write notes in his unbelievable handwriting that he had, his, which I was saying, Jamie has like the most unbelievable handwriting because my dad was a civil engineer and his handwriting was unbelievable. But um, he would write me in cursive and I have a note that says, I love you. I have a couple of other notes. One thing about my dad, he was always worried about my mom. Always worried. I mean, they were a team. They were a team. They were, that was team love, okay? They were the love team. And here he is lying in this hospital bed from June 29th to September 15th. I don't know how, was that 10 weeks, three months? I'll never forget he wrote a note right before he passed about the furnace. He was so concerned about the house and my mom, you know, having the heat, et cetera, et cetera. And he literally wrote a note, something about the furnace, you know, to check the furnace, take care of the furnace. But that's, that's who my dad was, you know, mm -hmm. always thinking about others. You know, here he is a man with this rare disease that no one really knows much about it. 80% um, of the people that get it are women. Uh, and it's, uh, it, back then it was like one in some million. I mean, it's like very rare. I mean, now you hear more about it, mm -hmm. but of course we're, we're 33 years later and, and medical research mm -hmm. is able to help people. Mm -hmm. You know, back then they really didn't have medicine or anything. But um, point is that there he was literally dying but worry, so worried about you know my mom and the house and this and that because that's who he was he was a man of kindness and never put himself first never yeah selfless pure love yep so all of a sudden he he gets sick out of nowhere has a tracheotomy can't speak so he writes notes in the hospital to you of love yep every day and tell me about the funeral did you speak I, I don't think I did. I don't think I had the strength. I mean, that's really one of the reasons why I'm here today. Like you and I talked about it, that today's an opportunity to really put it out there and speak from my heart. And I'm, I, I'm not hoping. I know my dad is with me right now. I know he and my mom. They're here, they're part of the show, they're in heaven, and they're listening. Yeah. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to speak at his funeral and tell him, because he's here right now. This is shaking. I feel your dad, Ben, right with me. So I want to give you the opportunity okay. to say everything you want to say to him. I want to thank him for being not only the best father that I could ever, ever have had or asked for, but setting an example. That's what my dad stood in my mind. He was a man of integrity. Like I said earlier, he practiced kindness and tolerance. He was a World War II veteran. He actually was shot in his heel, I believe, but he never complained. You know, he really didn't talk about the war. We, you know, my brothers and I have talked about this recently, how we really didn't know much. You know, after he passed, you know, our, our, my mom, Rita, would, would tell us a little bit. And uh, perhaps there were some other relatives after he passed, you know, over the years, we'd get some information from them. But um, he was a, a quiet man, but he also was a very funny man. and. This also is Brandon, my son. Humble, quiet, uh, happy to be home. But when he's with his friends and family, he's funny. He's making a joke, you know, 
pulling the chair out from somebody, you know, that kind of a thing. And that's who my dad was. He loved life. He loved his family. But like I said, most importantly, he set an example to me of how you treat human beings. And also, he had a dog. <laughs> and this is a funny story. So my dad lost both his parents very young. He was three or four when his dad passed, and I believe he was 16 when his mom passed. So he lived with my Aunt Pauline, Uncle Louie, Aunt Molly, Uncle Harry. These are all on my dad's side. These were my grandparents' brothers, uh, sisters, actually. So my mom, I guess, I'm not sure if they were engaged, but they, they lived there probably after they were married. And a funny story, I heard they used to talk behind my mom's back that she was always messing up the pillows. And then my mom found out it was the dog. And I'm sharing this story because I never had a dog. My whole life I had cats. But I now have a dog who is part of our family, Kovu. And I just want to say to my dad, I have a dog. <laughs> and when I play with the dog, the do I, I love the dog. I never thought I could have a dog because I always had cats. And uh, I'm so happy I have a dog for, for several reasons, but one of the reasons is because I knew my dad loved dogs and, you know, I never had that experience. And here I am at 58 years old. I got a dog for the, you know, at 56. Mm. So everything kind of falls into its place in a, in a happy way. Yeah. What's the dog's name? Kovu, K-O-V-U. K-O-V-U. And what are your memories of your dad when you were little? You told me a few of them. So some of the things that I had shared with you is that my dad and I used to fold laundry together because he and my mom were a team and he helped her with all the household stuff. And there's not a lot of men that A, like to do that and B, do that. <laughs> but he really, you know, he helped. He helped with everything. And we would sit in the bedroom, my parents' bedroom, and we would fold laundry. We would talk. Sometimes the TV would be on. We'd be watching a show. And I just remember that as a wonderful memory because we were spending time together. And I loved spending time with him. Another memory was um, every Friday, just about, he worked for the Department of New York Transportation, and he typically had meetings on Fridays, I believe. He would go into Manhattan, and he would come home every Friday for a little, as they say, a tchotchke for me, like a candle. Um, but my best memory is when he would bring a bakery item, because <laughs> he and I both had the biggest sweet tooth, and he loved seven-layer cake. And Mary Kay, my first cousin, her sister, Marsha, she can attest to this. She, we always, whenever we talk about my, my dad, her, her Uncle Ben, my dad, she'd say, oh, God, un Uncle Ben used to bring me a seven layer every single time we get together, every single time we see him, because that's who he was. Beautiful. And from what bakery? Um, so, Cream Puff Bakery in <laughs> Massapequa, New York. I would love to know if it's still in business, but I know the owners passed because they would probably be around my parents' age in their very late 90s, but they were dear friends of my parents and uh, amazing, amazing bakery goods. Mm. So, I love you so much and I love your dad so much. He's so special. <laughs> So I want to show everybody the slideshow because I want them to see your whole family, okay. including your dad and everybody. And so they get an idea, and your dog, and just the <laughs> whole family that your dad and mom created to spread the mm -hmm. love all over the world. It's what, 75 years married now they would be? June 18th would be 75 years, yeah. Be beautiful, mazel tov, beautiful, beautiful. So Josh, skip to the slideshow. Please play the slideshow. Oh, Mary Kay wrote, yes, seven layer cake.
Oh my God. Mm. <laughs> so I love you so much, Mala. So what was it like to see that slideshow? Oh, needed tissues. Very emotional. I mean, I, I wish I met your dad. You have such nice stories. Jody Jaffe just wrote that. Love you, Jody. Love. Oh, I love you, Jody. Such a beautiful family. Sheila Rose, love. Sheila, love. It's a heart from Sheila. Love you, love you. So much love for you and your family. I appreciate it, everyone. It takes a lot to get up here and do this. But I'm really happy I'm here. Thank you, Kenny. So what touched your heart in seeing that slideshow? What? what? The wedding pictures, mostly, of my parents. Mm -hmm. Because they're, like you said, they're, they're like a model power couple. I mean, look how gorgeous they are. Mm -hmm. But what, what's important to me, as you know, Kenny, is even though they were so beautiful on the outside, it was the inside. The inside, they, they you know, my mom grew up in the Depression. My, my dad was born in 24. He was pretty much an orphan, you could say. His aunts raised him with my Uncle Charlie, Mary Kay, who's on there. My uh, Uncle Charlie, who I miss too. He uh, was really like a second dad to me, and he was so funny, so funny. We used to go to their house all the time in Chappaqua, Pleasantville, New York, and Aunt Kay. May she rest in peace too. Made the best spaghetti and meatballs of anybody I know. <laughs> Lots of good times, lots of memories. Just, I love thinking about all the memories, but just can't go backwards, got to go forwards. So Mary Kay Love just wrote, you're a natural, beautiful cuz, our family. Some wonderful times, just, you know, and I was the baby of the whole family, so I got so much attention and love. I was spoiled. I mean, I had three older brothers, and then Mary Kay, Marsha, and their brother, Ronnie, who ironically is the same name as my husband. Um, you know, we were all really close. And then, of course, there's also my mom's side. But this is about Dad today. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> but we also had a very, very tight-knit family and amazing memories with, you know, my mom was one of five kids. So I have a lot of cousins and, you know, good times, good stuff. Yeah, and a whole lot of love. A whole and lot of love, So yep. after seeing that slideshow, what would you love to tell your dad? I love you, Dad. And I always will. There isn't a day in my life since September 15th, 1990, when he passed. There is not one day that goes by that I don't think about my dad. Not one day. And it's not like I think about him just once. I think about him many times throughout the day, especially now that Brandon's getting older. I keep seeing and hearing my dad in my son. And also, my husband Ronnie, who I love very, very much, married 21 years, he also reminds me of my dad very much. Very, very mellow and laid back. <laughs> And the funny thing is, I'm not very mellow and laid back. <laughs> so um, I guess I surround myself with men that are mellow and laid back, but that's a good thing. We even each other out. So Eric Rudnick just sent you love. Oh my Heart God. Hi, Eric. Who's Eric? He's a dear old friend from high school. Uh huh. That's what happens with these in loving memories. They come out of the woodwork yep. from your high school. Dear old friend from high school. Love Eric, right? Love yeah. you, Eric. Love, love you, you so Eric. Much, Eric. Love. <laughs> He's in California. Love you, love you. Spreading love to California. And True Love also wrote a big heart. Love you, love you. So there's so much love. Everybody's loving you and your dad so much right now and your family and everyone. So I dedicated a song to you and your dad to love you. So Josh, please play the next song after the slideshow. <laughs> Esta canción, si ustedes me permiten, se la quiero dedicar a mi héroe, a mi papá, Joaquín Alán.
to let me shine That's your way You always walk the stair behind So I was the one that all your glory But you are the one with all strength Beautiful face without a Beautiful smile behind the bed. Did you ever know that you're my hero? You're everything I would like to be. I can fly. Because I love that song and it reminds me of my dad so much because he was the wind beneath my wings and my hero, both. So Amy Lynn just wrote, Hi Mala, I love you. Aw, I love you too, Amy. Close friend in Florida. Terry Middenek just wrote to you. My first cousin on my, my, so Mary Kay is my closest cousin on mm -hmm. my dad's side and Terry Madonic is my closest cousin on my mom's side and I love her so much and her mom is my Aunt Marcy and she's the only one left on my mom's side of five children. So Terry Mininek just wrote, yeah, she cherishes you. What she said? She cherishes you. I cherish you too, cuz. I love you so much. So that's your cuz too. Yeah, my mom's side. My closest cousin on my mom's side. I'm, oh, I'm very all. fortunate. I don't have actual blood. Well, they are my blood, but they're my cousins. And mm -hmm. so Mary Kay is my closest cousin on dad's side. And Terry is my closest cousin on mom's side. And they're just both my hearts. I love them both. So what would you love to tell your whole family right now live? I love you guys. <laughs> I love family. I miss everybody so much that's the main thing about living in Florida <laughs> that I don't like <laughs> is that I miss my family and I miss my closest three best friends I miss you I love you Stacy Iris and Edie I love you all I talk to you all almost every day if it's a phone call or a text tour in New Jersey um, Iris is in New York, Stacy and Edie are in New Jersey, but they are my sisters. I've known all of them since childhood. And that's Iris um, with her mom, Selma, mm. who really was my second mom, mm. and I miss her too. There's so much love in that picture. That's Selma, Iris, and my mom, myself, and that's Jamie as a little girl at Iris's first wedding. And I love that picture, so thank you for including it. And then the other picture is from Mother's Day of this past year. Those are all my kids. 
<laughs> There's Jamie in the middle mm -hmm. with her beautiful husband, Jacob, who is not a son-in-law. I gained a son. Mm -hmm. And there's Brandon on the right. I, yeah, there he is. And look at the smiles in that picture. Of course, there's Kovu, the dog. He has to be in it. Mm. Um, but look at those smiles. Um, Brandon is actually the one, when I said brother-in-law about Jacob, mom, he is not a brother-in-law. He is my brother. Mm. And I said, you know something? You're right. I'm, he's my son. Mm. So Ronnie and I gained a son and Brandon gained a brother from Jamie's marriage. She's now married two years. And uh, again, mom and dad, I know you're here and I know you're feeling the love and that makes me really happy. So Sheila Rose just wrote such a beautiful smile. Everybody's just loving you and your dad and your family. So what would you love to say to them right now? I love you. <laughs> to my family, there's, there's just nothing like family. In life, nothing is perfect. You're going to have fights and you're going to have disagreements and you're even probably going to have periods where maybe you don't speak to somebody. But I make sure, and again, this is something my dad instilled in me, mm -hmm. you always take the high road. You might need some time. Perhaps you're upset. Somebody did something you didn't like or they disappointed you and you're very hurt because I'm one of those people, as my best friends know. Mm -hmm. I get hurt very easily. That's just who I am. That's who I am. But once I realize that, you know, nobody means to, to hurt you on purpose. It's life. People have misunderstandings. Things happen. People are stressed. You know, the world is kind of crazy right now. Mm -hmm. So you learn to forgive. Mm -hmm. And that's what my dad taught me. Just continue to be kind. It's the old, you know, golden rule. Sounds cliche, but that's what I practice. So to forgive and love and forgive and love. So mm -hmm. right now on live TV, I want to give you the opportunity because life is short and we only have now, we could pass right now, to tell each one of them individually how much you love them. Everyone in the pictures or just everyone yeah, I everyone love? In the pictures, just everyone in the oh, pictures. Oh, okay. Well, Selma's passed, but I love and loved her so much. She was like a second mom. That's Iris is my oldest best friend since she says it was three, but we'll say since diapers, 55 years of friendship. I don't think a lot of people can say that. I love you, Iris. I, she calls me M and I call her I. I love you so much. And I love your husband, Mike, and your kids, Ava and Jojo and little Mike. I just love you guys so much. And I hope I get to see you soon. Hopefully in March, I'm going to take a trip to New York. And then of course, mom, I love you always and forever. And there's Jamie in the picture. I love you. She already knows that, <laughs> but I love her so much. She's my best friend. And there's Jacob, my son. He's now my son. And I thank God for him. He makes Jamie so happy. They're, that, they're, they're a power couple, couple too, by the way. Major power couple. They've been through a lot um, as far as Jacob's health. But everything is wonderful now. And I just look forward to many years of spending time with them. And they're two dogs. <laughs> and, uh, of course, Jamie's in the picture. I love you, Jamie. And there's Brandon. I love you, Brandon. Oh, I love that kid so much. Beautiful. So much love. And we only have now to love each other. So everyone, go out and tell everyone you love them. I love all of you, each and every one of you. And so I'm going to end the show with a song that I dedicated to you. But I just want to give you one more opportunity to tell your dad how much you love him. I love you so much, Dad. So many amazing memories in a short period of time. I know you're watching over Brandon and Jamie and Jacob and Ronnie and I. And I just, I pray you're proud of everybody. We love you so much. Your memory will always be with me. Never, ever forgotten, always remembered. Rest in peace. Take care of mom. I love you. <sighs> That's it. I 
can't really say anymore. So it just, it really hurts. It's that old expression, taken too soon. But always remembered, but taken way too soon. So I love you so much, Marla, and I love your dad, Ben, so much, so much, so much, and your whole family so much. I love you all. So I dedicated a song to you, your dad, and your whole family to end the show, and then we'll share at the end. So please play the last song. There's a calm surrender to the rush of day When the heat of a rolling wind can be turned away Unenchanted moment and it sees me through It's enough for this restless warrior just to be with you shivers down my spine. I'm feeling all this love from your family and you know it's oh love you mom. Jamie just wrote love you mom. I love I you. I love more. you Jamie. Love Power you to more. the couples. Love you Sheila. Love love you love you. God I'm so emotional after that song because I'm feeling all of your family love and it was a wedding. My, I felt like it was your whole family having a wedding. So why did I play that song? Because 
It's all about love. But I don't know if you remembered, I told you the first movie I... Oh, oh sorry, sorry. Um, you played it because it's all about love. And thank you. I love you, Kenny, for every single thing you've done since we started speaking. This is amazing. But I think maybe one of the other reasons you played it is because I shared with you that Lion King is my favorite Disney movie. And one of the reasons is, well, I am a Leo. My birthday is August 3rd. Um, but actually, that was the first movie I took Jamie to see when she was three years old. So, of course, I remember that, and that was very special. But I do really love that movie. So, I love you so much. I love you, too. And that is why I played it. You remembered. Thank you. Yes, I did. So, I want to thank you for being on the Florida Love Show today. I love you, love you, love you. I love your family. I love your dad, Ben. Mom, everyone, brothers, everyone. I love you too. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It was so nice to be here in this atmosphere. Everyone is so warm and loving in the studio. Um, I feel home. I hope to come back sometime soon, if you'll let me back. <laughs> and uh, I'll bring you another hat, promise. But it won't be gold. I'll, I'll bring a different color. <laughs> Absolutely. I would love to have you back to spread the love all over the world. I would love so, it. So, again, love you so much. Love you, love you, love you. Love you, Kenny. I hope everybody has a weekend full of fun and love. Beautiful. So I want to thank all you lovers for watching the Florida Love Show today. Yeah. Yeah. From Marla and her whole family. I want to thank all you lovers for watching the Florida Love Show today, for celebrating uh, uh, the family, Marla's family, in memory of her dad, Ben, and just loving them all. I love each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. And I'm just so moved right now. So can you feel the love tonight? <laughs> so life is short. We only have now to love each other. Only now. So go out and love everyone around you. I love you, love you, love you all. And as I end every show, who can you give a rose to? I love you. You've been listening to the Florida Love Show, where we've been spreading love in the Florida community. For more information, please contact me, Kenny Love at 917-699-1995 or ken at florida-love.com or on our website, florida-love.com. See you next week, 3 p.m. Friday for the Friday Love Hour. Keep spreading love in your life and have a loving week. Love you all.